Today I want to introduce you to arguably the most complicated and probably the best Rolex. This is the Rolex Sky Dweller. You know I'm a pocket watch fan. Pocket watch time. I've got loads of pocket watches. I collect pocket watches. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And today we're going to discuss my Rolex Sky Dweller. I'm not exactly sure why it's taken me this long to make a video about this watch, but it's definitely one of the jewels of my collection and I've had it for several years. Before I get into some details about this watch, let me tell you a quick story. Initially in my watch collecting journey, I was one of those people who actually just didn't like Rolex as a brand. For too long I've heard how good the watch was, how in demand the watch was, and of course how much hype surrounded the brand. And in general, the more hype a watch has, the less interested I'm in the watch. Don't get me wrong, I've always known that Rolex makes a great quality product. If they didn't make that quality product, they wouldn't be Rolex after all. But nothing in the Rolex catalog really said, wow, that's a great watch. That is, until the Sky Dweller. So what makes the Sky Dweller so unique? Well, for one, it's actually a complicated movement. One of my pet peeves of Rolex is that Rolex actually just makes pretty simple watches. There's nothing that complicated about a watch with a date. There's nothing that complicated about a diver. You can buy a Seiko Quartz that's more accurate that has all of these functions. So it really wasn't until Rolex released this watch, an annual calendar, that it got my attention. So simply put, what's an annual calendar? Well, for every other watch you own that isn't an annual calendar, when a month that isn't 31 days long comes to pass, you have to adjust your watch. In an annual calendar, for one full year, it does it for you. Only on the jump from February to March do you have to play with the date. And man, is that a convenient function. And not only does this watch have an annual calendar, it probably has one of the cleanest annual calendars I've ever seen. So you can find lots of examples of annual calendars. Omega makes an annual calendar. It's a little busy. Patek Philippe, the founder of the annual calendar, makes a couple cool ones, but most of them are pretty not my style. So for this watch to have such a clean presentation of an annual calendar was really pleasing to the eye. And not to mention, they throw a GMT function in there. So I guess this is a good time to show you how you set the time. So this fluted bezel isn't just a regular fluted bezel. This is actually called the ring command bezel. This bezel is actually attached to the movement and you actually use it to set the annual calendar. The advantage? There's no holes in the cases. There's no extra buttons to push. By twisting this knob and having it be in the right spot, all the adjusting of the calendar comes from the stem. So let me show you the positions. With the ring command bezel turned all the way to the right, you can pull out the crown fully you can move it in any direction you want, and it does absolutely nothing. Besides this position where everything's locked out, there's three other positions that actually have a function. Click the ring command bezel three clicks over, and this is where you get to adjust the clock pretty much like a regular clock. This is where you can hack the seconds. Pretty much if this watch wasn't an annual calendar, this would be the normal position. This is when you move the local time hand, which also then adjusts the GMT hand. Moving the ring command bezel one to the right, this is where you can start to bring in the GMT function. The 24 hour hand doesn't move, but now you can adjust the local time by one hour. Moving the stem in either direction jumps the hour hand in one hour increments in either direction. Click the ring command bezel one to the right again, and now you're into the date wheel. And here you can scroll through the date really fast in either direction. And notice when you cross 31 and you go into the next month, you'll see an indicator jump positions. This red indicator shows you the month. 12 hours in a day, 12 months in a year, the system just makes sense. At this point, you can click the ring command bezel one more to the right, and you're back in the locked out mode. All in all, you can set your annual calendar in probably under 30 seconds. And if you've ever handled another annual calendar, well, that doesn't happen that fast. So the design of this watch, the design of this movement is fantastic. So speaking of design, a quick history lesson. 
In 2012, the Sky Dweller was introduced. This family of watch is only 11 years old. This is the first new model line Rolex had produced in probably 20 years. Rolex is not a brand for innovation. But in this particular example, wow, did they innovate. Initially, this watch was released in different variations of solid gold with a leather strap with a bracelet. Reality is nobody really cared. In solid gold, this watch is very heavy and it was very expensive. At this time, the Sky Dweller was pretty much a dud. That all changed in 2017 when the Sky Dweller was released in two-tone and more importantly, stainless steel. The stainless steel variants were instantaneously popular. It also helped that the timing was pretty perfect for a big uptick in the watch market. Just this year, in 2023, the Sky Dweller got a small facelift. Instead of the proprietary 9001 movement, well, now there's the 9002. Is it a big change? Absolutely not. In typical Rolex fashion, small changes. They did add a new color though, green, and I love it. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was the size and the fit of this watch. I have a six and a half inch wrist. That's not a big wrist, but a six and a half inch wrist definitely closes some doors on you when you're looking at larger watches. And if you haven't looked at a spec sheet of the Sky Dweller, it's a 42 millimeter watch. So it's a pretty big watch. And not only is it just big, it's actually pretty heavy. The ring command bezel is solid 18 karat gold, and that complicated movement, well, it's not a light piece of steel. But the good news, Rolex has some pretty good designers on their team. So even though this watch isn't the smallest watch in the world, 42 millimeters on paper, just a fraction over 50 millimeters lug to lug, and 14 millimeters tall, it wears surprisingly small. So as an owner of this watch, and as you can see from many angles and many photos here on my video, I think this watch fits a six and a half inch wrist very well. I probably wouldn't go much smaller though. So if you've been looking at a Rolex Sky Dweller and you're not the largest wristed individual in the world, there's hope. I think this watch can still be yours. And with that, you can stand out from the rest of the crowd. Everybody's got a Submariner. Everybody's got a GMT. But how many people do you know who has a Sky Dweller? The best and the most complicated watch that Rolex makes. Thanks for watching this little review on the Rolex Sky Dweller. If you have any questions, please leave them below. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And I'll catch you next week in a new episode. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe to Pocket Watch Time. Pocket Watch Time. I have lots of reviews on watches and on pocket watches. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.